everyone, it's Cass. Welcome back to my channel, What Cass Read. Welcome back. We are here on the seventh day of seven days of posting videos. I cannot believe I managed to film, edit, upload, do all of these videos for you in one week. It was a lot of work. I really hope that you enjoyed them. Um, and I'm here today to bring you my 2019 book awards. This is a video that I have done every year since I've been on booktube. So that makes it my third year of doing the book awards. I love making this video because it's, it's getting a chance to take a look at why I love the books that I loved. So we take a look at the best characters I read, the best action sequence, the, bat, the best magic system. That's a brand new category. So every year I open up the awards with the best cover that I encountered in 2019. And this book had a cover on it that the moment I saw the cover reveal, because I follow this author on Twitter, the moment I saw this cover reveal, I, <laughs> I hadn't even started this series yet. And I was like, that cover is sick and I wanna read that book so bad, but I hadn't even started the whole series yet. And I'm talking about Dark Dawn, written by Jay Kristoff. He previewed the cover way back in 2018. Again, hadn't even started on this whole series yet. And I saw this cover and I was like, that is so sick. I need to read that book. First of all, I do like the US editions because I, I, I just love how badass Mia Corver is on all of these covers. That is just like, if you can take a look, all right? So they've got the sword with the raven hilt. There's blood on her fingers. You can see all of the shadows. So if you're, you know, if you're a Nevernight fan, you know what all of that symbolizes. And it is just awesome. For the next category, I think this is a brand new category as well. Um, the best world building. That's something that I added on this year because you all know that I read primarily fantasy stories. So one of the major things that I review when I talk about a book is the world building. This might actually shock you in terms of my choice for the best world building, but I've decided to go with Strange the Dreamer written by Lainey Taylor. For so long, I had avoided this book. Well, if you've seen my best of 2019 videos, you'll know that I rank this book as the best book that I had read for the entire year. Part of that reason is the world building, because whenever somebody had tried to tell you about what this book was about, no one could really talk about it because they're like, well, Lainey Taylor has beautiful writing. It's just so out there. It's just so different from anything you've ever read before. And this book and this duology stuck with me for a very, very long time. Like, I feel like when you get into fantasy, sometimes the world building can just be a little bit too similar from book to book to book to book. And to have a book like this that is pretty out of left field in terms of where our characters are going, the magic that is utilized, and it's magic that you've sometimes seen before, but some of it is magic that you haven't seen before. Nothing else came close to this. Nothing else came even close to this in terms of the world that Lainey Taylor created. Okay, the best plot twist is a category that I also really enjoy because sometimes there's books out there that you just don't see it coming. I have two choices for this one. The first one is Warbreaker, written by Brandon Sanderson. This is one of his standalone, current standalone novels in the Cosmere universe. Um, and I, I can't talk about the plot twist because that is a major spoiler, but everything that you are thinking leading up to the point where you get this like giant reveal about one of the characters, I think I'm reading one thing and then the plot twist drops and then all of a sudden I'm reading something completely different from what I had originally thought. The reason why this was such a good plot twist was because it had been set up so well from like everything organized in this book, all of the characters, all of the um, political and religious implications um, pointed toward one thing. And then you find out that there's something completely different going on. The next book that I want to talk about, about the best plot twist, it has to go to The Black Prism written by Brent Weeks. I already have a whole review of this book on my channel. And I also made a video talking about some of my favorite fantasy tropes. Um, and that video is mildly spoilery. So if you haven't started on this series, go ahead. It's book number one of the Lightbringer series. So you're, you won't be behind on the series if you try this one out. But I talk about this like being one of the biggest plot twists I have ever come across. Like I almost DNF this book. I'm not gonna lie. I've gotten about 30 to 40% of the way through the book. And I was like, you know, there's like really nothing 
that spectacular about this book. It, it reads kind of like every other fantasy book that I've been reading of late. And then that plot twist drops and I was like, oh shit, this is a completely different book. Everything that I had thought I knew about the characters, completely different. Everything that I had thought I knew about the world um, and what happened post-war, like this setting is like 16 years after a giant war that happens. Everything that I had thought I had construct constructed about this world after that war, it had all like been blown to smoke because of this plot twist and it was so crazy. Um, so this was definitely edged out Warbreaker in terms of the best plot twist. So if you like plot twists, you have to check out The Black Prism. All right, the next book is uh, for the category of best action sequence. I only have one book that I have picked for that one. And that goes to Skyward, written by Brandon Sanderson. This is book number one of the Skyward series, young adult science fiction. And there's a young girl who is trained to become a pilot in a starship. She goes through a training academy and all of her training, like drills and regimens, and then the real life battles that she fights out in space with Skyward Flight. They're super exciting, super engaging. I tag teamed this book in printed format and on audio. I would recommend either if you're looking for just something that's super action packed. I loved it. Um, I even said that when I had wrapped this book up was that this was moved so fast. It was so enjoyable. Um, it was light hearted, but serious, great young characters and great action with the military training aspect. So it wasn't like something that would bog you down in excess detail if you don't like those kinds of action sequences. So again, it was very easy to follow for um, a Luddite like myself when it comes to aviation. The most emotional read is a category that I've kept on here because there's always something that's bound to surprise me. And the most emotional read ended up being the shortest book of the year that I read, which is The King's Letters, written by Sebastian de Castell. It's an e-novella that you download from his website. And it's a little snippet where um, it takes place in the same world as the Great Coat series, because the king that they are referring to is King Palis. The whole setup of the Great Coat series is that King Palis uh, is being overthrown um, and the kingdom is being taken over by the dukes of the realm. And so the King's Letters, is a collection of letters that King Palis has written while he is being overthrown and they were meant to be distributed amongst various different characters and different people but it says at the very beginning like King Palis wrote these letters while he was being imprisoned and getting ready to be overthrown these lever these letters never made it out and I sobbed begin the tears begin just like uncontrolled mess. Over 35 pages. <laughs> it was very emotional for a fan of the Great Coat series. So it's very niche. It's a very niche type of emotional read. But if you're a fan of the Great Coats, I highly recommend you check that out. Like I said, it's free to download on Sebastian de Castell's website. Now we're gonna get to some of my character awards. We have the best female sidekick. Usually I have a lot of different sidekicks, but this year I found one that stood out above all the others. And I'm talking to you about Pepper from the Wayfarer series, in particular in A Closed and Common Orbit. So this year I took sidekick less of like, especially for the females, less of like an action sidekick where I have in the past. Um, Pepper is such a nurturing and understanding sidekick um, that made a great companion to Lovelace um, within this story while Lovelace is trying to figure out her humanity as an artificial intelligence unit uploaded into a body kit. And the insight that Pepper can provide for Lovelace, whether it's welcome all the time or not, she's not like this old woman mentor. She's a young woman. They're kind of in this roommate situation for uh, the start of this book. And so a lot of it is like trepidation. Should I talk to her? Should I not talk to her? There's a lot of like like trying to figure out our relationship with one another. Um, and I thought she was just magnificent. This book was one of the best books that I read this whole year. Um, you also see that in this book in particular in the best books that I read in 2019 video. For my male sidekicks, <laughs> again, I went um, maybe a different route with my male sidekicks. I ended up not picking any human male sidekicks. I guess the human men were not doing it for me this year. So the first uh, male sidekick that I absolutely adored was Mr. Kindly in Nevernight, 
written by Jay Kristoff. This is book number one of the Nevernight Chronicle. Mr. Kindly is a not cat, a cat made of shadows, a demon familiar external conscious of Mia Corvair in the form of these shadows. He, he's not snarky with her a lot of the time. He is some of the time, but he's particularly snarky with some of the other characters that we meet as the series progresses. Um, but he just was a companion of hers since she was a young girl orphaned after her father was murdered and um, she escaped the slaughter. Um, so Mr. Kindly, this shadow cat, came to her um, while she was very much alone and trying to figure herself out at like eight years old. So I loved Mr. Kindly throughout the whole series. And my other favorite male sidekick is Silas within A Sorcery of Thorns written by Margaret Rogerson. This is a standalone. This was such a great standalone novel this year um, and I do actually have a whole review of this on my channel as well. Silas is a demon um, who is bound to one of these rich families within this uh, world. These rich families gain their magic and some of their wealth has to do with the fact that a demon is bound to their service. Silas shows up at such unexpected moments. Um, I rooted for him so hard during this whole book. Um, I think the only thing that I wrote on Goodreads about this book was that Silas was my sweet bean. And the thing is, is like, even though he, I found him to be really endearing, there's not a second in your mind while you're reading this book that makes you feel safe. Ever, you never feel totally safe around Silas because he's a demon. So you shouldn't feel safe while you're around Silas, but I just loved him. Um, so just a little bit morally gray, kind of non-human uh, sidekicks were my jam this year. Okay, best ensemble cast. I have two books that I want to mention for this category as well. The first one that I want to mention is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet written by Becky Chambers. So of course this is the beginning of the Wayfarer series. I would say that the Wayfarer series as a whole, all three parts, are amazing ensemble casts. Um, but the one that you're introduced to in here, Aboard the Wayfarer, sets you up for this whole planetary system so magnificently because there's so much diversity in this crew of different alien races and how each of them tries to work with one another in small close quarters on a spaceship um, and just how they make things work. There were so many great character moments within this. Um, I don't talk about this book enough because I love to close in common orbit and I think I might have to do a reread of this whole trilogy because these character moments were what makes the Wayfarer series shine. We have Dragon Keeper written by Robin Hobb. This is book number one of the Rain Wild Chronicles. So this is um, a set of four books, book number one of that set of four books, but it is not the first book in the whole Realm of the Elderling series. So if you're looking to get into Robin Hobb, remember I have a whole playlist. I have a video of how to read Robin Hobb. This is not where you should start. Check out that video if you wanna check out that author. But best ensemble cast because we have really young, vivacious, tenacious, I never use the word vivacious, so I like that, driven but also downtrodden characters in this book with not only do we have young dragon keepers who are kind of in exile um, within the rain wilds, um, but we have some wealthier people from Bingtown who come in and try to shake things up and shake up the way of life with the dragons and with the rain wilds. Um, and so this book is going to represent all four books within the Chronicle because as things go progress, like the more I fell in love with the entire ensemble, like I could not pick out one specific character that I love more than the others in this and uh, the dragons are a part of this too because there's another set of characters of dragons that we follow along with that are so great. Um, so best ensemble cast, Robin Hobb, duh. So I wanted to talk about my favorite mentor um, of the year because it's fantasy and there's always a mentor in these books. And my favorite mentor of the year also goes to Mercurio within Nevernight. Um, he is Mia Corvair's first mentor and he does have a large role to play in this whole series. He has a really great relationship with her. What I liked in particular about this mentor-mentee relationship is they're uh, not like, they're not very wholesome. Like if you know anything about this book, it's not a very wholesome relationship that Mia has with a lot of different people um, and Mercurio is probably the most wholesome that you can be while still not being very wholesome altogether. Um, I just thought he was a great character and a little bit of a different look to the mentor trope that we find within fantasy. 
I also had a category for the best villain of the year. I think this category was so much fun and there is no other villain that I had more fun with than Hest Finbach within the Rain Wild Chronicles. Hest Finbach was like a very cliche classic villain. At times I was like, gosh, this guy just won't quit. And it just keeps going for four books and I loved it. Very, very satisfying character story. Um, very, very satisfying conclusion with Hess Finbach. I loved every second of his storyline. Like even as we move further and further along in the books, we get more perspectives from Hest as well. And he is not one of these villains that you're thinking that there are going to be any redeeming qualities because while you're reading his character perspective, you realize, oh, there actually are no redeeming qualities to you. So great. But another really good villain, I just finished up this book in December. This is a Elantris written by Brandon Sanderson, one of his standalone currently um, Cosmere novels. Uh, the villain in here is Hrothen. I don't know if that's how I'm supposed to pronounce it, but he is the priest from an outside religion that's come to try and convert all of the citizens of Kay in their capital city. Um, we get a lot of character perspectives from him in this book because he's one of the three main characters that we follow. His is a villain story that it. you see him question his motives, question the motives of those around him. He is not totally comically evil the way that I felt like Hess Finbach sometimes was. Um, so this was another really great villain arc throughout the whole book. Um, again, a standalone. So I really love this one. Um, check it out if you haven't already. One of my favorite friendships to read about is Lethal White, Robin Ellicott, and Comoran Strike. This is book number four of the Comoran Strike series. Probably one of the only uh, non-fantasy books that I read this whole year. Um, but this is the um, mystery thriller series written by J.K. Rowling, but under the pseudonym Robert Galbraith. Robin and Comoran end book three on a very, very large cliffhanger. It's just like the outcome of their friendship and relationship is hanging in the balance. Um, and we get some pretty good scenes right at the start of this of whether or not they're going to rectify that situation. And then of course, as the book goes on, like it's one of those really good, like, I'm not talking to you, but we're still friends. And should we still remain friends? And of course we're still good friends. One of those, plot lines. Um, I really enjoyed that. I love, I love Come On Strike. If you haven't seen the BBC series, go ahead and check it out because it's a really good, I feel like, truthful adaptation of book to screen. My favorite couple of the year, or my favorite trash couple <laughs> of the entire year. This is The Cruel Prince written by Holly Black, book number one of the Folk of the Air series. Um, and of course, I'm talking about Jude Duarte and Prince Cardin. You don't want to root for them, but you do. That's one of those couples and it's just a YA trilogy that just hit me in all the right places with just the right amount of angst, just the right amount of like toxic male interest, but also toxic female interest. It, it's a trash couple and I rooted for them very, very hard. Um, so favorite couple of the year, Jude Duarte, Prince Cardin, and this is the Cruel Prince. All right, so let's talk about my best female lead character. I have two again, just because I couldn't narrow it down that much. Um, but the first one that I want to talk about is Princess Serene inside Elantris, written by Brandon Sanderson. She came into my life toward the end of the year. Like I said, I read this book in December. Um, and there's a lot of times where I find there's like one lone female protagonist in this world of men that you see a lot in fantasy. And a lot of the times I don't particularly like that female. I was actually really worried about whether or not I would like Princess Serene and I loved her. Um, I loved the fact that she knew she was smart, but she decided to use how intelligent she was in an intelligent way to get what she wanted, wasn't overt about it, and when she wanted to strike, she struck. So she knew how to play the game, I guess you could say, and that's why I really, really liked her. There were some like misunderstanding trope within this book as well, but for her as a character, she was very steadfast in her ability and her self and the way that she can maneuver around a royal court. I absolutely loved her. So um, a really, really good female character to read about. And then my favorite of all favorite female casts of characters. This is uh, Holy Sister written by Mark Lawrence. This is book number three of the Book of the Ancestor trilogy. Um, and then of course, Nona Gray being the female lead character. She might be one of my favorite fantasy characters of all time, not just female or male, like favorite characters 
overall. I think her resolution and her conclusion inside the story was was magical. It was perfection. I loved it. The growth that we experienced with Nona throughout the whole series was some of my favorite things to read overall. So I think this just was such a great book. Again, we get, I feel like, so few great female characters in fantasy um, that really bring something new to the table, and Mark Lawrence hit it out of the park with Holy Sister and Nona Gray. So TBH. The two female characters were so strong, I had a really hard time figuring out some male characters that I felt like were the best male lead characters that I had read this year. But I did find two. I stand by them. I think these are great choices. So even though it was harder for me to think about, I still found some good ones for you. So the first one is Gavin Guile in The Black Prism written by Brent Weeks. Um, Gavin Guile is one of our Prism characters and he has a younger brother, Dazen Guile. Now I know I talked about the plot twist and Gavin's character... I guess classification throughout this whole book. You can interpret this, if you've read this book, you can interpret who Gavin is however you want. And regardless of how you interpret him, I feel like he's still a great character. Um, I cannot wait to continue this whole series. I cannot wait to see what other tricks he has in store. Um, so Gavin Guile is a great male lead. I'm super happy that I finally was able to get to Lightbringer series in 2019. And opposite end of the spectrum for male characters, the other best male lead character was Lazlo Strange from Strange the Dreamer. Opposite end of the spectrum, just in terms of what he also brought to the table, because when you first meet him, he is a daydreamer. He uh, loves fanciful stories he grew up in a library but as his story goes on um, and the abilities that he possesses naturally but then the abilities that he acquires as the story goes on I loved every single thing about it he also had such a great romance in here I didn't put Laszlo's romance in here as my favorite couple because I don't really like the female, but you know, anyways, anyways, great male lead character. If you listen to this on audiobook, the male who reads the audiobook narrator has such a dreamy voice. So now like when I hear that audiobook, I associate that with Lazlo Strange as well. I did read a few nonfiction books this year. Not a lot, mostly memoirs. Uh, but the best nonfiction book that I read this year was all the way back in January of last year is Becoming, written by Michelle Obama. I did also listen to this on audiobook as well because Michelle Obama narrates it. So it, it did a lot of things for me as a woman, as a woman of color, as a person who works in education. There was just so many things about Michelle's life that I absolutely, that resonated with me. Um, so I don't, pick up a lot of nonfiction, but that's my pick for the best nonfiction that I read in 2019. All right, I have three categories left for you. This is always such a long video when I end up filming it. Um, and I know that you're probably sick of seeing some of the same books over and over and over again. But if you haven't checked out any of these books, I really recommend that you do because they keep popping up for a reason. So the best standalone books of the year. I have two. The first one is Elantris written by Brandon Sanderson. I am telling you, this just came roaring into my life in December. And I'm glad that I reserve making all of these end of the year videos until January because this would not have made it if I had pre-filmed before my vacation. Um, so I'm not going to plug this one too much further. But the next best standalone that I have to mention is Sorcery of Thorns written by Margaret Rogerson. I became very, very attached to Margaret Rogerson's writing style and her storytelling within um, An Enchantment of Ravens, but I didn't like the actual story and the actual plot. And I remember thinking when I read that, that if only Margaret Rogerson had been given a hundred extra pages, this would have been a great book. Then she came out with Sorcery of Thorns this year, um, I'm sorry, in 2019, and it was a hundred and some more pages than the other book, and I was like, yes, I know I'm gonna be in for a good story, and I absolutely was. I know this, like, was one of the, like, hyped books, but I really enjoyed it. I didn't really follow the hype with it. It was just I knew I liked Margaret Rogerson's writing, and that's why I picked it up. So I highly recommend this for a standalone fantasy novel if you want to get into one. Second to last category is a brand new category that I decided to add this year as well, and that is the best magic system. I can't believe I haven't talked about magic systems yet. I do have one video where I rank my magic systems that I like, but I think I need to do another one um, because I would definitely include 
include this magic system in there. I'm talking about drafting the magic system inside the Black Prism written by Brent Weeks. It is really, really complicated, and I did talk about it a little bit in my review, but it has all to do with color, all of the different colors in the light spectrum. And each of the different colors within the spectrum have different powers associated with it. Most people can only draft one color. Few people can draft two or more, and then the prism is able to draft all of the colors in the light spectrum. Very complex. I don't know if I fully explained it, but that's like the most dumbed down explanation that I could possibly give for it. But this was the most unique complex original magic system that I came across in 2019. And then the final book that I have to talk about for my 2019 book awards, wrapping up this whole week's worth of 2019 wrap-ups, is the book with the best finale. And for that, I have chosen Dark Dawn, written by Jay Kristoff. I actually vlogged my experience reading the ending of that, so if you haven't checked it out, go ahead. Um, there's a little bit of swearing in there, just because I can't, like, you see my mind, like, actually being blown while I'm reading the ending of this. This whole book for me I struggled with, like it was like a three to four star read for parts of it, but then that ending was a five star read and the ending was so perfect for all of these characters, just the different resolutions that they got, the different journeys that their characters had gone through. I felt like each of the different action um, actions that were taken for them, for this ending, was completely appropriate. Dark Dawn, I don't know what else to say, um, but this whole Nevernight Chronicle was such a thrilling read adventure for me to go on this entire year, and I'm telling you, this finale got me right in the feels. Okay, we did it. Officially the end of seven days of seven videos, and of course I love doing these book award videos. Um, like I said, I've done them every year I've been on booktube, so this is my third annual book awards. Let me know what you thought about the winners, let me know what you thought about the different categories. Um, do you ever consider doing some book awards of your own, and if so, who would you have picked? to win some of these different categories. Follow me in my social media if you want to chat with me about books throughout the year, um, because we are now in 2020 and I'm ready to hit the ground running full steam ahead. Um, so follow me on my Instagram and Twitter, at whatcastread, the same as this channel. Go ahead and subscribe if you're brand new here. I'd love to have you back and hit the like button on this video because that helps my channel out. And of course, you know how these videos end. I'll talk to you later. Bye.